Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between 14th and the 24th of April 2018. I'm here with my faithful chamomile tea, which is a god scent, at least for me it is. I was just talking to a friend uh, and a colleague, Erica Raven, um, on Facebook and we did a video uh, a couple of months ago together, if you remember, we we're going to do another one together. And she was telling me, God, these last few weeks feel like a few months. And yeah, it, it feels like so much time has passed. It's been challenging and for some of us it's been fruitful as well. And there's just a feeling, you know, it's like a blacksmith hitting the, the iron again and again and again, folding it into one another, folding it into one another, making that blade that is both um, flexible and strong. So this is what we have been doing, and there's amazing transits in the celestial dome this week as well so we better start because i want to keep it as short and concise as possible being a saturnian person that i am anyway so saturn the uh, uh saturn saturday the 14th we have jupiter sextile pluto and mars sextile neptune jupiter sextile pluto is more of a communal effect it's a subtle effect it's an effect that can really help us group and understand our strength as a group, something that we do together that can prove useful or beneficial. It's about joining with the people who think the same way we do, who believe the same things that we believe in, who, who see the subjects that we see as important uh, 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 the same and, and want to progress them together. It's really a beautiful aspect that shows us that together we're stronger than uh, than we are apart and gives us the strength to go through the challenges that we are going through at the moment mars sext and neptune again giving power to the masses communally and 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 providing a subtle influence that can bring initiative that can bring forward movement that can bring even some aggressiveness and some anger by the public, by the masses, by nature, by the universe, you know, but in order to provide a forward movement. And, and, and it's an also an amazing uh, uh, experience, an amazing energy to work with if you're in the arts or if you're doing something with spirituality or with nature or, or creative, because this is a very creative influence coming in that we can utilize for our own creative endeavors. Anyway. But it makes us as a, as a whole, as the public, more creative and such. Moon conjunct Mercury at noon in Saturday. That's uh, Central European time. If you are in the United States, you have to uh, uh, take about nine hours before. So Saturday noontime and early morning in the States, but noontime in Europe. We have the moon conjunct Mercury. We can talk a lot on that Saturday. Just make sure you're not uh, um, saying t uh, nonsense. But even if you are saying nonsense, don't be too judgmental because the moon is going to square Saturn in the evening. So don't be too sorry or too hard with yourself for anything you did say. And the same goes with other people. Sunday the 15th, we have Hygieia conjunct Neptune. Hygieia, the goddess of hygiene, of health. The, world, the word hygiene comes from her name. Hygieia. It's about that cleanliness, that amount of purity that provides health. And it's conjunct the god of the oceans and water, Neptune. <laughs> the god in charge of nature and the universe as a whole. Is that 
so surprising that we find out recently how bad is the condition of our water sources, of our oceans, of our rivers, of our lakes. You know, just over the past week I've been exposed to so many videos over social media uh, regarding microplastics and microfibers of plastics that are practically in everything. They're not just in the ocean, they're in the fish, they're in the seaweed, they're in the salt that we eat, they're in honey, they're in practically every living animal, including ourselves. And we know these microplastics go into our flesh, they go into our lungs, they go into our digestive systems and our bloodstreams, and they make us cancerously sick, God forbid. Not only us, everything. And they fall off from everything that is plastic, especially from every fabric that is plastic, like lycra or fleas, anything that isn't a natural fabric. Every time we wash it, every time we laundry it, goes like these microfibers go in like synthetic fur, you know, <laughs> goes into the to the water uh, uh, system and from there to the ocean, and that's it. It comes back to us. So Hygieia conjunct Neptune over these days, is it a wonder that we are paying so much attention to the very, very awful state of our environmental system? That we are finding out just how bad things are. So unimaginably worse than we thought they were just a short while ago. So all through this time, this is a subject that can float and be on our tables or on our platters, on our platters, uh, uh, so to speak. Saturday the 15th, there's an Aries moon. It's an aggressive moon as it is, and it's squaring Mars in the morning, Central European time. That's Saturday night for you Americans. Uh, so Sunday morning, don't get too hectic. Don't get too aggressive. Don't get too fast for your own good. Uh, calm down those energies. And it, it's a great time to do sports. It's a great time for physical activity. It's a great time to do some creative things, but channel that energy, channel that energy. Mercury is going direct on the 15th. And as it gains speeds during the next few days, our communications and our navigation and our thoughts processing are going to get much better and easier. You know, I have friends that were born with a Mercury retrograde and one of them told me, uh, a few days ago, you know, when there's a Mercury retrograde, I'm finally understood. And a lot of people with Mercury retrogrades feel that, that when Mercury grows retrograde, retrograde in the sky, finally things work the way they should. <laughs> okay, Monday the 16th, we have a new moon in the sky. And you know, as I always say, two days before, one day after, it's an energetical imprint. Everything that passes through the vessel, Malden, through the vessel that we are, everything that passes through the vessel is imprinted and stays with us over the next 29 and a half days. So if we're lustful, if we're afraid, if we're angry, if we're joyful, if we're elated, if we're creative, if we're benevolent, that stays with us, that energy, and follows us through the next month, as uh, Rick Levine likes to call it. So, it's a new moon in 26 Aries. It's conjunct Uranus squaring Pluto. This is not an easy new moon. This is a rebellious new moon. This is a new moon of upheavals, of could be tragedies, and, 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 uh, things that change abruptly and could be very unsettling. It's a moon that wants to dethrone the old and bring in the new. And I'm not talking about this moon in a good or bad kind of viewpoint. Because it isn't good or bad as it is. It's how you do it and what you do with it that, make, that will make it good or bad. 
And if we're talking about the more positive aspects, you know, the negative aspects is that we could be aggressive and rebellious and throw away and, and totally unconsiderate towards people in our life or projects that we're already involved in because we want to get ahead, because we want to get to the new and disregard everything and throw away the baby with the bathwater. Um, or be too assertive or aggressive in our way of handling things. The good things about this moon is, you know, that dethroning of the old, the bringing in of the new. You know, we have the forward movement by the Aries moon. We have the connection to ourselves, to our core. So it's a good thing to, to be connected to yourself, to know what you want, to put those goals ahead of you, to, 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 to mark those targets. But to not be too blind to the needs and, 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 and disregard others, to the needs of others and disregard others. others. Uh, don't be naive about how your needs fit in with the group. See how they fit in with the group, okay? Check that out. But the conjunction to Uranus brings in a lot of cerebrality, a lot of the higher mind. We can be genius. We can think outside the box. We can actually do get ahead. It brings a lot of mind to that Aries moon and that square to Pluto can make us dig deep enough to actually have the epiphanies and understandings that we need to disregard the old. So on a, on a personal plane, we can take all these patterns that we've had in our life or behaviors that we had in our lives or people that were tying us down in our lives or projects that were tying us down in our lives and finally see the light and understand how we can solve this or act differently or that we can get ahead, that we can step forward and actually get ourselves loose from all of that. And, 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 and welcome the new in, in our lives. Dethrone the old. But this could be also a, a, a moon of, of general upheaval, you know, of dethroning the old when we're talking about governmental systems. When we're talking about uh, um, conflicts within governmental systems that could flare up between two different parts between people in power. This could be an aggressive time. So it's a new moon and let's hope that we don't dig too deep uh, to hurt ourselves and that we do get, get ahead the way we should. Tuesday the 17th Chiron enters Aries. It's going to be in Aries until July 2026 if I'm not mistaken. So eight years. And as it goes into Aries, you know, Chiron talks about the wound, the very intimate known wound, the wound that we carry for a long time. As it was in Pisces, it was the, the wound of the world, the wound of water, the wound of nature. And as Chiron goes into Aries, this wound comes back home, comes back to us. We suddenly understand that there is a wound, we acknowledge the wound, and that we are in charge, that we have the power, it's in our own hands to actually heal that wound. And not only that, that that wound was not there always, that it was inflicted. That it was inflicted by somebody that was in a position of authority, that was supposed to take care of us and and, 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 and guard us, but instead created that wound, you know? So if we're talking about this on a personal level, you know, people who have Chiron in Aries in their charts, when I have Chiron uh, uh, in Aries clients, I many times find that these are people that in their younger years, that in their childhood, have been given the feeling that they're not good enough, that they're not strong enough, Chiron in Pisces, that they don't have the power to handle or stand in front of uh, uh, whatever it is that hurts them. 
And as I said, that they're not good enough, that they're not up to par, that they don't really have the power to achieve what it is they need to achieve. But as they grow older, these are the people who become overachievers. These are the people who understand that it is up to them to set their achievements. And then they set on a, a, a quest, making sure um, and, and really um, showing themselves and showing everybody that they can do it, that they can be the best. And, and, and there's a very high need here to show myself and to show the rest of the world that I can achieve, that I can do it, that I am good enough. So when Chiron goes into Aries over the next eight years, we first of all acknowledge the wound. We acknowledge that it is in our hands to heal this wound because we are the ones afflicted by it. That this wound was not always there, that it was uh, afflicted by people who needed to guard us but did not do a good job, whether it is our parents personally, you know, or our care systems, or our governmental systems and the people we put in charge, the system itself, on a general plane. And we become the overachievers that we need to become in order to change matters. So, amen to that. Amen that we will become good physicians and healers to the wound that we have created ourselves. And, and that's something very important, you know, also understanding that it's in within our own hands and it is our job healing ourselves, you know. Um, don't look up or don't look out to the other person's patch of grass. There's so much work to be done with this one, you know. I understand that there's so much work with me, you know that I sometimes feel selfish <laughs> because there's so much yet to be done and I come from the position that I want to save the world but if I want to save the world I have to save myself if I want to change the world I want to change myself I, I need to consume less animal products whether it's uh, meat or dairy products or eggs I have to create less waste. I have to make sure that my ecological footprint is better because this is the time, Chiron and Aries, that the drop understands that as the drop is, the ocean is. The, drops, the drop understands that it is only drops like her that make up the vastness, immeasurable ocean. And that as the drop is, the ocean is is that it is only always has been always will be up to us to change this universe that it is always always was always will be in our own hands and we live in exciting times it is our generation that is making the critical shift it is only because <laughs> and here comes sun conjunct uranus which happens just um, the next day on Wednesday the 18th the epiphanies and the understanding that it is our generation that needs to make that shift that needs to make that change that it is us that would either stand or fall that would either deal with the problems that we're dealing with only because of that quickening of the age of Aquarius of that Uranus only because we were getting ahead so fast, we became so plentiful on this planet. You know, if we were a quarter of the number of people that we are today, we wouldn't be dealing with all these problems that we're dealing with today. Like overpopulation, like the depletion of resources, like global hunger, like global warming. Like uh, the immeasurable suffering of animals because of our consumption the ongoing holocaust the the desertification of our oceans because of overfishing the pollution that we make 
only because we've advanced so fast, too fast maybe, that we are dealing with all these ecological, moral, physical problems. And it is only because we are dealing with these problems today that we'll be able to overcome them tomorrow. Because our destinies, ladies and gents, our destiny, if we're not hit by a meteor or we don't destroy ourselves in the process, is to become the gardeners of the universe. It's to become the gardeners of the universe and to be so well, um, so knowledgeable with solving these kinds of problems that we can we could come to any ecological system and restore it to its state of Eden be sure that this is our destiny as humanity to be the caretakers of this garden not the rulers of it but the caretakers of it and this is the shift that we are making and we have eight years to deal with these problems and to become overachievers together. Let's do it. And not only together, as individuals, Aries, first and foremost. So Chiron enters Iris in Tuesday the 17th and we have the moon trining Saturn in the morning. <clears throat> it's a good day for work. It's a good day for your career. It's a good day to set goals strategically and follow up on them we have Venus opposing Jupiter over these days and trining Pluto saying that we should be careful not to ask for too much to be content with what we have it's not good days to ask for a raise or 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 uh, you know but um, these are good days to to work with what you have and to be modest and to uh, Understand the value of what you already hold in your hands. Not to be extravagant, to be tactful and discreet. Uh, because we have a, 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 a tendency for exaggeration over these days. And the trying to Pluto says that the true strength we can draw from inside, from internal sources, not from outside these days. The true satisfaction comes from within during these days, not from outside facts. In the afternoon, we have the Moon Trine Mars, a very energetic afternoon Tuesday. And the Moon Trine Pluto in conjunct Venus at night, it's a great time to host, enjoy yourselves, have intimate uh, uh, relationships and, and, and uh, um, encounters. Uh, Tuesday night could be really wonderful for that. That's in, if you're in Europe, if you are in the States, you'll be able to enjoy that as soon as noontime. <laughs> Um, Wednesday the 18th we have Saturn entering its retrograde we'll be there for a couple of months I'm not going to talk about this retrograde now because we are already uh, uh, 23 minutes down this video just saying that every planet that retrogrades gives us another viewpoint or angle about the subject that it rules and Saturn rules the structures in our lives and the system so both personally and on a general level, we could be restructuring. Um, sun conjunct Uranus on that day. Genius time, epiphany time, thinking out of the box time. Also, be careful not to be too rebellious, not to be too short-tempered, and not to go too fast ahead. Um, this is also a time that is still prime time for accidents. Be careful on the roads all through this week, be careful at home, and, and, and go a little slower. The Gemini moon is going to sextile Mercury on Wednesday. A lot of talk, a lot of information, beautiful communication. Uh, go for it. And Thursday, the 19th moon, squaring Neptune in the afternoon. Then we become forgetful. Then we become a little discombobulated. And it's a great time for anything artistic, spiritual, just being in nature, but not analyzing with your left brain friday the 20th sun enters taurus happy birthday all you tauruses i'm a taurus as well but i'm on the last day of taurus so i still have a month to wait but when the sun enters taurus we can all enjoy life a little more as i said in the last video celebrate life look up 
Prem Rawat, listen to what he has to say, look him up on YouTube, one of my greatest teachers. Celebrate life. Sun enters stores, we can enjoy our food, drinks, love, sex, and, and anything sensual and aesthetic more than we usually do. We have a month to do so, so get on with it. And we have the Cancer Moon on Friday in a perigee, that means it's closest to Earth, to Earth and most influential. Um, and it's sextiles, the Sun and Uranus on that day. A lot of emotions, but emotions that could actually bring a renewal regarding our intimate subjects, our intimate circles, our home, our families. Great time to spend with these people uh, on Friday. Uh, people who are close to you, who you're intimate with, who you feel that you belong to. Uh, Saturday, the tw and a great time to host as well. Saturday the 21st, we still have the Cancer Moon, but this time it opposes Saturn in the morning. Again, that's Saturday night. Uh, that's, that's Friday night in America. That's Saturday morning in Europe. So, opposing uh, Saturday in the morning time, that's a time that we could be a lot less sure of ourselves. We could get feedback that is like a cold shower from people around us. And, and we could just feel like the world is not supportive enough. So take that in consideration and just chill and, and round your edges during that day and, and, uh, and pad your sensitivity, pad yourselves so you won't get too hurt on that day. Just stating that on the 22nd we're going to have the 22nd we're going to have the Lyrid meteor shower. Good day to look at the, sorry, good night to look at the sky. I'm going to talk about more over the next video. I want to thank you for your comments. I want to thank you for your likes and your sharing because they expose this video to more people. Any comment that you give, even if it's just a thank you, exposes this video to more people. And of course, your sharing and likes. And um, for personal consultations and for private lessons or courses from your own, the convenience of your own home uh, with me, just contact me. And of course, with any question you might have, Thank you for listening. Thank you for being who you are and thank you for making an effort to make yourself and this world a better place for all of us to live in. This is Boaz Feiler saying namaste, thank you and goodbye. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.